quick little stream of consciousness thought I'm having about offenses. We all at some point or another offended some more regularly than others. And as I want to do, I use the old trick my father gave me to figure some things out. It's kind of blow up the picture, so to speak. And one of the common ones I use is what if my Lord was right here, right next to me physically? Uh, I, as a saved individual, in his eternal presence, as I believe I am, could physically look at him with my eyes. And he is here all the time through everything. In other words, magnifying him in the way that we as people find easier to accept, easier to believe. I'm not belittling the, belittling the relationship I have with him. It's very real. And as a human being, because we put so much trust in our senses, sometimes I can still forget that and become insecure. And then boom, I'm offended. But if he was sitting there all the time and someone said this awful thing to me, would it be as offensive? And I think that kind of answers itself. It's like, kind of like a rhetorical question that will, of course, not. And you can take the thief on the cross. One didn't believe in him, and the other one did. And the one that didn't was complaining. And the one that did was going through the same horror that all three of them were. And he had the presence of mind to say, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, that's pretty amazing. Because I don't think they were two totally different people as far as the substance of who they were. But one saw something the other one didn't see and because he saw that as physically tormented as I'm sure he was it was greatly reduced by that even though he may not have known because he was only asking he wasn't saying I can't wait to see you Lord on the other side <laughs> he just says remember me would you please and because he understood he was in the presence of of someone, he might not. I'm not saying he understood he was in the presence of God. I, I think he did, but I don't know that for sure. But the point I'm bringing in is, the the more aware we are of him and his presence, the less these offenses offend, because they are offenses. They really are. When people are mean to us, it's offensive. It's totally understandable. I'm not saying it's wrong or you're in your flesh as in a condemning way if you're offended by these things yeah you're in your flesh of course you are everyone is and when we're more aware of him I was trying to avoid using that when he's bigger these things get smaller that's the cliche but it, it is true it's accurate Though, but I would liken it more to the more real he is of course he's real but the more aware you I am of his presence that he really is right here not to scold me not to condemn me not to correct me not to chastise me beat me and scourge me as religion would have you think and then I used to believe I would use it in a condemning way well just think brother next time you light up a cigarette just saying I light this cigarette in Jesus name I drink this beer in Jesus name you know I used to like to do things like that not too much I mean, it wasn't the Adolf Hitler of condemnation in Christianity, but I, I could I could use little weapons like that, and that's not accurate. That's not how he's there. He's there to help you. He's there to let you know that you're loved, even if you're not able to quit at that time. Because the quitting of the bad thing isn't due to your perseverance and determination. I mean, to a certain extent it is because people do literally get their flesh under control on that issue. 
But I guarantee you on another issue, they're just as bad, if not ten times worse, because now they they not only have this sin, this need to sin, that needs an outlet, they have the newfound sin of religious pride because they, they know that they've conquered this one sin. So they're twice the son of hell, to coin a phrase, as they used to be. But when you truly experience the reality of him in your life, of his presence, of his love, not because you have this great faith and now he's going to do all kinds of great things for you. But now you can see that you already have everything. Or at least you catch a glimpse of that. I have everything. My father gave me everything, which is himself. I have access to him, his heart, his love, his kindness. That's what his kingdom is. All those things. All those things and more, all in their perfect form. He loves me perfectly. He accepts me perfectly. Again, not like some liberal who just rewards you for doing dumb things all the time. That's not what I'm saying. I feel silly. I you don't have to throw that in there. It's it's so common sense to me. But people will say that. Oh yeah, now God loves you. He's gonna bless you for doing evil. Not what I'm saying. And I understand. There's probably some who do believe such things, but I don't. I don't know anyone who does, but I don't. It's His love that changes me. It's knowing that reality. And seeing it a little bit more clearly every day. The true reality that I have a God. And he's pure and perfect in his kindness and his love towards me. He's giving it to me all the time. And the more I see that, it's not that I feel guilty or condemned or ashamed or who. I would never want to do that to him. He's so, it's just not a thought. It just, it wipes it away. So it's like, it's not a that he only wipes your tears away he he wipes everything away that isn't beautiful and virtuous so when Paul mentions that in Philippians 4 8 all those things to think on uh, I don't take it that as a command anymore I think he's just saying well just look at the one who is those things and spend time with him and get to know him and see what it does of course he didn't say and see what it does he, he, then he told you what it'll do because what it did for him and it leads to another scripture verse 12 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me and that's always used as this big faith thing well if you just have enough faith then you can conquer mountains and make millions and it's not that he, he says I'm paraphrasing but leading up to verse 12 Philippians 4 he's basically saying I can have little to nothing and be content I can be rich and have everything and still just be content because that's not what it is. It's my God. Because whether you're rich or poor, whether things are good or bad, you can still be offended very easily if you're not aware of that reality that you have a God. And all this other stuff becomes so small when you're in his presence, and again, to bring it back to the beginning, if you just exaggerate, you're literally just sitting there with him. And he was looking into your eyes and talking to you or listening to you or whatever it is you may have a need for at this moment. Maybe you would really like to hear him say something to you. Can you imagine being offended by the, the last thing that did offend you in that moment while he was talking to you? Or, or while you're talking to him because you just need to pour your heart out to him regarding this one issue? Do you, can you really imagine yourself in, in the middle of that conversation thinking, oh man, that guy the other day, when he said that, when he did that, maybe, but I don't think so. Maybe my imagination is just too wild, but I don't think that would even be there because it would be him. I would want to share with him things about him and who he is to me or listen to him tell me who I am to him <laughs> can you imagine that but he's already done enough he doesn't have to tell me those things because all I have to do is look at the things he's already done which is everything and thanks for listening if you did God bless us all
In Jesus' name, amen.